Association is a professional non-profit body affiliated to All India Management Association with the aim to promote scientific management in industry and trade. It also undertakes training and consultancy to improve managerial effectiveness and competitiveness of its members. Merit Management Association formed in 1966 is registered under the Society's Registration Act 1860. The founder members of the association were Shri K N Mohan, Managing Director; Mohan Mikans Breweries; Shri Sultan Singh Jain, Managing Director; Saru Smelting; and Shri R Sahai, General Manager, Dorala Sugar Works. Very good evening and warm welcome to everyone present on this webinar Beyond series. It's a Beyond COVID. Am I audible right now? Yeah, that's great. So this is the Beyond series. This is the second session in the Beyond series. Here we'll talk about the major paradigm shift in the education system. As we all are aware that we are going through a certain change of phase in the lifestyle of a human being. I think so. Beyond COVID, the things would drastically change in every sphere. No matter its education, no matter its industry, no matter its any sort of business or any business model that we are following right now, would definitely change in the going scale. So, moving ahead, we belong to a community where we feel teacher is everything. Uh, I can uh, very well recall a very old uh, Sanskrit phrase. Where, तुमेव माता चपिता तुमेव तुमेव विद्या द्रविणम तुमेव तुमेव सर्वम मम देव देव टीचर इज द टॉप ऑफ एवरीथिंग नो मैटर इट्स बीइंग रिकॉग्नाइज्ड एज इक्वलेंट टू पेरेंट गॉड द पर्सन हु गिव्स नॉलेज एवरीथिंग डाउन द लाइन व्हेन वी सी अबाउट द एजुकेशन सिस्टम द मेजर चेंजेस दैट वी आर गोना फेस आर ड्रास्टिक Yesterday I was in a meeting uh, on the webinar with Mr. Amitabh Khan, CEO of Niti Aayog. He said, down the line, after six months, we can see the entire education system would be changing, and it's gonna be something like that. Total, the education system will move to online phase. So probably we need to think about the situations that are gonna come up. It may happen that we're gonna have only virtual classes. virtual universities everything going to be virtual but at the same time we need to think about what will happen to the human touch the student teacher interface whether this is going to be played by artificial intelligence or it's going to be something else we really have need to think about it so with the same topic we have thought of to conduct this webinar so in this webinar we'll focus and talk about the situations that going to come up beyond covid as you all been to education fraternity you all been teaching colleges schools and professors you know that you are doing online classes as of now so it's totally virtual classroom as of now so this shift how students will cope up with this, with this shift and how uh, being a teacher we have the responsibility to move this in a smoother way along with it it's very important for us to understand that management education or higher education is not only about teaching something with which is in the books it's more about the practical experience building a character teaching them self confidence and the body language which can be taught with one to one interaction mostly so it's quite important for us to understand what's going to be the outcome beyond covid so at the same time it will be 
major responsibility lies on the teachers education fraternity how this shift going to be changing along with it we know being a student or being a teacher we also know the human touch is also important in our life if human touch would not be there not be required so in that case probably we don't have schools and university out there human touch is always very essential part in building the character of a human being as we do need parents and our colleagues we also need teachers so we have to balance this situation as of now how this phase is going to be changed on this we have two expert with us dr punam devdat from shobhit university and dr devendra kumar arora from mit business school he is a dean business mit business school so first i will request dr punam devdat to guide us how this phase is going to change how people going to adapt this online phase will there be any only online universities online classes or it's going to be a mix of both online and offline or in case everything shifts to an online situation like the higher education goes to online basic education goes to online what different does it make to the society along with it what will happen to the infrastructure that we have as of now we do have n number of university physical universities around merit itself right we do not talk want to talk about the entire india pan india so so i first request dr punam devdat to guide us in how we going to change this phase and along with it i would like to welcome you on this platform and uh, giving us time and opportunity to have you on this webinar so i request dr punam devdat to first guide us and then we'll move it to dr devendra arora so dr punam the webinar is yours now please thank you gorav it is indeed a pleasure and a privilege to be here on this zoom meeting with all our learned participants i would like to wish a very good evening to all the participants of this meeting and i bring greetings mm -hmm. from shobhit university so let me introduce myself a little i am dr punam devdas as gorav has already mentioned i am director center for psychology and human behavior and center for yoga and research in shobhit university so the topic which has been chosen for this meeting is extremely relevant for everyone who is connected with education in any way some of you may be related to higher education some of you may be related to school education but all aspects of education have been tremendously impacted by the present situation so we all agree that this is an unprecedented situation in the history of the world never before has a lockdown a total lockdown of this magnitude occurred anywhere any time in the world and as regards the impact on education if you all have noticed one of the very significant facts is that as soon as the spread of the virus became imminent the government decided to take drastic steps and the first thing that was locked down was educational institution and i expect that the last thing to open up also will be education why because this is a, a situation where educational institutions are places where hundreds and even thousands of human beings gather at one particular time so unless there was a lockdown these educational institutions would have become hot spots of infection through mutual spread so that is why since children and young people gather in large numbers therefore it is important to maintain social distancing and to take enough precautions that something drastic does not happen now as a start the impact the impact i would like to emphasize that in education there will be impact on two aspects one aspect is the delivery of the content and the second aspect is the content itself and both of these the delivery as well as the content are going to be impacted tremendously by the current situation so as the situation prevails more all educational institutions are under lockdown 
and i would like to share with you our experience at shobhit university how we dealt with this the day it was announced that education the students have to stay at home we had a faculty meeting and from the very next day we started delivering content online through whether it was through e lectures through ppts uh, by uploading on the erp system and so on students were given assignments online and they started submitting those assignments online i would also like to share with you that yes no doubt initially there were especially some people encountered a problem with this kind of shift to the online system but very soon everyone became comfortable so i think that speaks volume for the adaptability of human beings sometimes we think that a particular style is going to be very difficult but with a little bit of effort things become simple and i think most educational institutions have now have shifted over to this same system of online learning now here i would say if we have to look at the impact in the coming time and how we are going to cope with it the first thing we have to understand is that the situation may not change in the very near future we don't exactly know when things will normalize but in a broad way we can rest assured that till such time as a cure or a vaccine is found social distancing will be of profound importance and likewise educational institutions will have to take great precautions so i nobody can say with certainty when karuna hale sahab ki nai kaj pura kishya ka pariyatri ka level hai bimar so we have to be prepared to cope with this situation on the long term that is one so every educational institution has to see how they are going to cope with this system of online education what i can predict or as i can visualize there may be certain changes which we have to bring about and one of the major changes will be the blended model of education by the blended model i mean that part of the content is delivered online and part of it a very small part of it may be delivered in physical form for instance Uh, wherever there are theory as well as practical classes to be held in fact for practical students may be required to go to laboratory so much of the theoretical content can be delivered online whereas students are invited in small batches for laboratory work so if the batches are kept small then the social distancing can be maintained and that is one way in which the system may go forward another system is that we encourage more and more of real time learning platforms to like we are having this meeting over here through zoom or there are other whole host of new sites have come up whereby you can have a meeting of a large number of people so those are another modality through which we can have some semblance of face to face interaction with our students one more system which i can visualize is that we send the theoretical lectures to our students say uh, a few lectures are sent at a time through online mode then we give one week to our students to study those lectures go through them and to note down their doubts or queries these queries and doubts are then shared with the teacher and on the basis of this these all the doubts and queries are collected collected together and on the best basis of these the teacher makes a video presentation or a video lecture in which these doubts and queries are handled and then that video lecture is shared with the students so as far as possible we have to uh, stick to this simulated reality whereby we can come to a compromise solution between a uh, totally uh, online and totally physical mode of education now another thing that we get especially for higher education another aspect which is very important that we encourage students to register for online courses like you have the mooc courses we have other uh, modalities like the swayam network we have we have coursera where a whole lot of courses are offered 
and the good part is that the, if a student performs this kind of a course online then those credits can be transferred to the university so he gets credit of those courses also and that can be added to his results another factor that will come up and that is another kind of suggestion which has been made is that we make our education system more flexible in terms of time right now what is happening is that every course has a fixed duration for graduation we have got a three year duration for post graduation maybe a two year duration and so on now another model which has been suggested is the any time any how education now what is this any time any how system this means that the courses the material is available online the student studies and performs at his own pace at his own speed online assessment system is also available so he takes that assessment on demand when he feels he is ready he appears for the exam and as he clears the papers as he clears the uh, the course the necessary amount of credits are transferred and as he accumulates the credit ultimately he gets his degree so it may be that he may complete his graduation not in 3 years but maybe in 4 years or maybe longer so we give that kind of flexibility depending upon the particular circumstances of the student who are not able to complete within the stipulated time here another thing that we have to keep in mind is that when we are dealing with all this we will need to look at online assessment also because just as it is difficult for us to hold classes while practicing social distancing so also examinations also will be difficult so perhaps a way out can be through an online system of assessment and each education institution has to develop its own or maybe the the bodies like the ugc and aict will also come up with certain modalities whereby online assessments can be carried out now what we also need to understand is that if we are switching over in a big way to online system then we will need to develop back end support also the first thing of course we need to do is to train our faculty to make them adapt so that they do not find difficulties and they become totally comfortable with this system as when the faculty is comfortable they will be able to deliver in a better way to the students and along with that we may need every institution may need to have a technical team to give back end technical support for any kind of glitches or any kind find of problems that may arise so that kind of infrastructure we will need to have so what i mean is that as gorov said that we all all the education institutions have got large infrastructure and what is going to happen to that well large in infrastructure which is there can be used in different ways for instance we may have if you want to maintain social distancing we may have classes but with very few students at one time so on one day uh, a set number of students are coming to the uh, campus then on another day the same class is held for another batch of students on a third day the same class is held for yet another batch of students so if we have 16 students in a class maybe on one day we call only 20 so that they can spread out in the class and some kind of social distancing may be practiced so these are the different systems that we have to look at and as things unfold we will have to see what suits which educational institution so if we follow this kind of phased out system then per necessity to complete the courses we will need to have some kind of delivery offline and online and part of the classes we may have in small batches for students face to face especially for clarification of doubt or uh, clarification now difficult now coming to the content part so this was about the delivery system how we are going to modify the system of delivery coming to the content i feel as i visualize that content also will need to be revised and looked at once again not only content but the kind of courses that we are going to 
uh, offer uh, in the coming time we know that there will be major differences or major uh, realignment and reshuffling of the economic and the industrial situation uh, many jobs may be lost <coughs> many new kinds of jobs may be created once the economy begins to bounce back there may be uh, the manufacturing se- uh, sector may start looking up the it sector may be resurgent once again so the pharma sector will become very important the medical studies will become very important so these may become the four sectors where growth will take place in a big way of course the basic forces will always be there the basic branches will always be there for example in engineering and so on but in addition so like in shogit university even in our btech level we focus a great deal on the uh, specializations like uh, artificial intelligence robotics machine learning and uh, uh, business analytics and so on these are the branches which will be very much in demand in the coming time now with regard to the content again uh, we have to keep in mind uh, content the theoretical content but as gaurav mentioned also that we need to our students need to have practical skills also it's very important for us to realize that currently also uh, the uh, when we speak to industry leaders we come to the conclusion that very many of the graduates who pass out do not have employability skills so now higher education will have to begin focusing on employability skills and the kind of skills which will be in demand are main number one of course the theoretical knowledge of the subject but along with that the ability to apply that knowledge so application skills or technical technical skills will be very important IT skills will be very important because every sector is going to be uh, <clears throat> depending on IT. And apart from that, communication skills and soft skills uh, go without saying that that is an important part. So we will have to build up, build all this into our curriculum. Now, when we talk of employability skills, for example, again I would like to share the example of what my Shobit University is doing. For example, for BTech students. it's an eight semester course we complete the course in seven semesters and in the final semester we like to send our students on to two industries for on the job on the site training and internship so with this for one full semester the student gets to learn the practical skills the applied skills and to understand what is the work atmosphere like so something like that we all of the curriculum is covered in terms of theoretical teaching partly it is covered in terms of practical teaching and partly we may encourage all our students from different fields whether they are from management or whether they are from engineering or pharma or whatever we encourage students to <coughs> they take up internship or go on site go to the organizations as juniors for as trainees for learning the skills the actual applied part of their speciality so this will also take care of the application skills and the employability skills of and one more advantage of this system is that if the student is sincere and bright he may impress the company he may impress the owner to such an extent that very often it happens that the uh, job is offered to the student at the end of the internship so there it is up to the student to build up the trust <coughs> and to polish his skills to such an extent that he becomes employable he becomes a desirable candidate for employment now along with all this so we will have to modify content we will have to modify delivery but again we have to keep one thing in mind what is that that with all this online teaching and everything we have to also see what is the flip side of it 
for example especially in schools or young children we cannot expect them to be online or be on their laptops or computers for 6 hours or for long hours so that is another consideration that we have to see what are the disadvantages of technology so one is the health issues there Uh, in terms of eyesight in terms of sitting in a particular position for long hours so the time period will have to be modified accordingly so that we do not put undue stress and strain physically on the children and yet one more consideration which is, it is some it's a matter which is coming up uh, in recent days it has been found uh, government agencies have found that during this period of lockdown the use of porn sites pornography sites on the internet has gone up exponentially it has also been studied that india is the third largest user of pornographic sites so these this is one danger when we expose our children give them access to the internet we have to also sensitize them to what is desirable and what is undesirable we have to monitor their activity on the internet and we have to build in safeguards that they do not become susceptible to these habits for one reason that viewing pornography especially for teenagers often becomes addictive and it has other emotional and behavioral consequences also so that is one safety feature that we will have to involve we will have to build in safety features as well as sensitize children and parents about the hazard of technology so if we take into account all these things the advantages as well as the disadvantages of technology and as long as we are uh, willing to be flexible i think that is the biggest challenge that we will need to bring in a certain amount of flexibility in our attitude as well as in our system and this flexibility we will have to modify our system according to the situation as it unfolds as yet things are not absolutely clear we do not know when life is going to get back to normal or if ever it will get back to pre corona level so we have to go on modifying and dealing with the situation as it unfolds and as it arises so these were a few thoughts that i wish to share um with all of you and if there are questions at the end i may i may i'm willing to take up those questions so thank you very much for your patience uh thank you dr punam for this wonderful thought that it's going to be changing the delivery method content and it's going to be changed